Hey guys, Boy here, and today I will teach you how to crush games with clinks, just like tops. If you're playing mid clinks, your role besides harassing your enemies until they want to give up the 200 bucks they spend on their compendium is to steal the big creeps around your side of the map instead of yours to hinder their farm, and because your cost range is huge, it's actually really easy to do that. Some heroes, though, can double wave you at level 1, and since you have no wave clear, make sure to be in experience acquisition range once you're forced to farm here or else you might lose the lane just by those two range creeps you're gonna miss. Because you can't really do much about this, use the time your creeps are gonna be under the enemy's tower to eat your own big creep and farm it if you have the time. When you're playing safe lane clinks, some heroes like Shaker or heroes that can drag waves can make your life a living hell. Since CS under tower is not your forte at level one, a thing you can do is learn death back to level one to either push the lane into the enemy like Topson does here because of this move, the tower attacks the melee creeps and he quickly recovers creep equilibrium from the enemy to get a safer laning stage and combat what Shaker did with uh, the lane. Back to the mid lane though, your job is to constantly harass your enemies, forcing them to either pull the mid wave or to fare a lot of region. This will give you either experience or good advantage, but you shouldn't jump the gun. Topson's first rotations usually start at round level 7 or 8. Unless the enemy cutting waves is really easy to catch, I don't think you should bother with that too much. Start rotating at around level 7 or 8, and ideally the items you want to have are Wraith Bands, Trads, and Wand. The reason for it is the move speed of Skeleton Walk and the damage that allows you to make sure you're gonna get kills, and also losing the least experience from your lane as possible since you're gonna be moving more often than TPing to other lanes. What you have to understand about rotating with clinks is that Death Pact is your most important skill even though you only max it later. The playstyle of clinks revolves around the fact that you really need to get a kill with the Death Pact buff on when you rotate. That allows you to not only scale with more damage, but it makes sure you can fight after it since you're gonna be able to recast it and there's not gonna be a timing window where you cannot do anything. Clix is much weaker without that ability, and if you fail your ganks, the hero becomes way less impressive. In this game, watch how Thompson before his first rotation had Death Pact available for a while, and he only commits it when he can deny Amber a camp and he's level 8 ready to gank. Once he handles the wave so that he doesn't take tower damage, he rotates, and you can clearly understand why Death Pact is so important. The extra HP makes you able to dive towers, and with the extra attack speed from Skeleton Walk, he kills Grandma, getting his first 5 damage. Since he died though, watch how Thompson plays the next 50 seconds. He literally stays mid farming. Not only getting kills is way less attractive because you're not gonna get the 5 damage from kills, you're also way less likely to get kills anyway since you're not getting the minus armor and you're also more likely to die without the extra HP. Once Death Pact is up though, he hits the catapult and zooms to the top lane. In this other game, as soon as he gets Death Pact up, he TPs bottom because he knew a bunch of heroes were showing top and that gets him his first 5 damage and then also a Necronomicon to eat. In this meta of Helm of the Dominator, Necros, Chen's Beastmasters and Lycans, Clinks is a great way to handle those guys since he can fight from very early and at this stage, eating a Helm of the Dominator creep can be game losing to the enemy since this is the way most of meta heroes get kills. Because of that necro he ate though, he is kinda forced to get another kill and luckily, he gets one on quad. What you need to understand about Death Pact is that once mid game comes, you need to be much more careful with when and how you use it so the enemy can wait it out or maybe a fight starts when it's not up and you're just not gonna show up and you might lose a lot from that. So eating a creep after you get a kill can be a dangerous thing especially if you're not careful about refreshing that cooldown again ASAP with another kill, but that is usually only possible in the early game since players are gonna group up more and it's gonna be hard to just like find someone and kill them. One thing to note is that because Skeleton Walk has a small cast time, you can actually cast it with Intrads and then go back to Aji to have more damage once you use it, so make sure to do that if you're confident. Another interesting thing to note about Clinks is that because you get Minus Armor with Death Pact, you don't have to use it only for kills. In this case, because all of the heroes on the dire side have escapes, he groups up top instead since he cannot kill the Void Spirit and gets a tier 1. But he then TPs bottom as Dyer gets a tier 1 and that's another cool thing about Skeleton Walk, you can cast it after your TP and he did this because his Lycan gave the call and so not only he gets more damage but he keeps on dealing with those pesky necros. In the safe lane game, Topson also leaves the lane at level 8 
This early timing of Clinks is probably only matched by a hero like Ursa overall. There is not a carry in the game that can move and deal damage this quickly with so few items, and you should be using this as much as you can while being careful about death pact. Here he rotates knowing Pango TP top, and because he knows Shaker is not alive, he moves for a Chen kill. The thing is, yes, he dies, but because he plays around death pact so well, he has 25 extra damage in 9 minutes into the game. This is really, really crazy. He literally has 30% extra damage just from those kills, and on top of that, he forced every hero to be middle right now. The skill and item build for this hero can change depending on the game after level 8. In games, the enemy doesn't have escapes. Crystal is into Deso Eggs is the build, but in that other game, he went for Orchid into Deso Eggs to get more kill potential. In that game, he also learns Burning Army only at level 13, whereas normally Thompson learns the skill at level 11. And that has a lot to do with the fact that without the Crystalis, Burning Army isn't actually that impressive. The mid game with this hero is all about choosing the right fights. For instance, here, Thompson against an anti mage. He's not an easy hero to kill, but he's also the hero he really wants to kill because he's the hero that's gonna scale. But there are ways to go about it. As he uses Death Pack, he can see the anti mage mid, but there's a big likelihood of a sentry being there, and he's probably gonna farm those creeps fast enough to be somewhere else. There's also a tier 1 for quick TPs. What Thompson does instead is predict that anti mage will fall back into the jungle near that spot, and he goes all the way around where there's no sentry to spot his movements. And when he sees anti-mage, he forecasts the camp he's going for, since the only way to kill that bad boy is with blank on cooldown. Notice that he doesn't eat the center straight up with death pact. At the end of the day, he still has a decent amount of duration on the buff, and he wants to milk that as much as possible. Watch what happens, he goes back to this part, eats the center as he gets vision of two heroes top, but he doesn't go for the grandma kill, because the two heroes top could collapse into him, and she has a sentry. Instead, he goes around, kind of making sure everything is fine. Now he knows AM and Grandma cannot be in this fight and with patience, and predicting Amber wants that bounty, he gets another kill followed by an anti-mage. Another thing that is really important to playing Clinks in any bracket is playing around sentries you do not see. In any bracket, as a Clinks gets kills, people will sentry lanes. If it's not a support, it's gonna be a core around towers and cliffs, and Thompson plays around that really, really well. It's hard to see sometimes, but watch this. They kill Void Spirit, and while he has vision of a low HP Mirana in the minimap and other people, he goes all the way around, and the deeper you go, the least likely a sentry is gonna be there, the least likely they're gonna know exactly where you are. There's a tier 1 mid. Even in high MMR games, the chance of a sentry being here is really low, and Thompson was correct. In this move, he gets vision of Mirana, gets the kill, further increasing his advantage. Another similar case of what I'm talking about happens here. Thompson doesn't show in the lane, he walks through the trees, so in case there is a sentry, it's much harder for Dyer to instantly stun or jump him, and after making sure he's safe, he can be in position to fight. Cop spans the blank cooldown, and it's an easy target for him. In the safe lane game, we can see exactly what I meant as Thompson runs to this fight. He crosses in front of the tier 2 tower, and there you go, a sentry deployed. In case a fight was not happening, this move can be really dangerous because Dyer could be waiting for him and thus going in between tier 2 and 3 would be the safer play, but it doesn't matter. And he kills Pango, it's a center, and that's the type of creep you want to be eating. If you're going to cast Death Pact, as you get a kill. And in this fight, Thompson has 65 extra damage in 16 minutes. Watch how he keeps using the deeper side of the map to try and see if the enemy is going to get greedy and farm a camp, considering there's still a tier 1 top. He doesn't get Pango, but he could've. In that anti-mage game, you can see how even when he's super far ahead, he does not commit without death pack being on, even though anti-mage is showing him. He waits the cooldown, he even lets heroes die, only to eat this camp and then commit. 
Klinx is a great hero. The combination of early power spike with cheap items allows this hero to snowball games with ease, getting more damage. Eggs is a great third item because it gives you mana, broken move speed, the burning boys are great, especially now that they use your damage instead of your base damage, and usually you'll be level 20 plus with your third item at this stage, giving you the extra attack range talent. This hero cannot even be considered a glass cannon at that stage because of Death Pact and Axe. Look at how much damage Topson is able to dish out in a game that is very even in terms of net worth. The raw physical damage is a hard counter to BKB reliant heroes like Enigma. And while you can be taken down even with Axe, look how tanky it makes Topson. Even if he dies, he will have time to cast his spells, and as long as he drops the double skeleton walk with Burning Army, it's almost impossible for anyone to win a fight like this. This is another great example of Clint's being incredible when Axe is up. He realizes Radiant might be attempting Roshan, and he just explodes Shaker, and while he dies at the end, since he has buyback, it's just impossible for Radiant to commit to this, even though Thompson was alone at the start. By acquiring the early damage with good rotations and keeping their momentum up with cheap effective items, like Crystalis and Desso, you get to a point where each Burning Boy deals more than 100 damage, and you can have about 10 of those up, and that's not counting your own hero. It's crazy. Guys, thank you a lot for watching, commenting, and subscribing. If you have any feedback, make sure to leave those in the comments. If you're back at Dota because of the battle pass, because of COVID-19, check our Discord channel. Maybe you're afraid of playing Dota by yourself and want to know more about the game. We have a lot of cool people from all around the globe there. Check it out. I think you can find some good friends to talk Dota or play Dota, whatever you want. If you want to help this channel, check our Patreon rewards. We have a ton of stuff. Uh, we have a ton of stuff there. And finally, if you want to see me cast or play Dota 2, follow me on Twitch. I uh, do stream relatively consistently. Thank you a lot. Have a good one and bye.